Hello and welcome to the Rogers Brief. I'm Adam Rogers. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Today I'm going to talk to you about a major lawsuit that was filed last week in the province of Nova Scotia by Northern Pulp, the owners of the mill in Pictou County, against the province of Nova Scotia. The lawsuit alleges that the government of Nova Scotia conspired to shut down the mill and thus cost the owners $450 million in lost profits. But I want to talk to you about the legal strategy behind that lawsuit, the relative strength of the lawsuit, and also where I think this is going to ultimately end up. Now, many people would be offended uh, that Northern Pulp has made this move, after, especially after having taken so much government money over the years and having been a major polluter in the province of Nova Scotia. Uh, first of all, it seemed clear uh, that the situation was resolved uh, for many. Uh, the Boat Harbour Act was brought in by the province of Nova Scotia, which gave Northern Pulp five years to come up with a new effluent treatment facility. Northern Pulp did nothing essentially during that five-year time frame, didn't build a new effluent treatment facility, didn't design one that would uh, meet with approval, and so uh, the deadline came and went, Nova Scotia stuck with it, and so the mill was shut down. However, it's not so simple. To understand the legal strategy of Northern Pulp, it's uh, important that you put yourself in their shoes. Where, what does that mean? Northern Pulp is not a company run out of Picto. They are a major international uh, corporate conglomerate, a complex uh, organization that is ultimately based in Indonesia. And so when you're thinking of why they make certain moves, you have to think of what is their perspective. In their perspective, the management of this company is to try to maximize shareholder value. In fact, that is their legal obligation. And so in this case, that means that they must portray the mill in Picto County as being a valuable entity. And to be a valuable entity, it means it must be an ongoing entity, an operating entity much more valuable as an operating entity than it would be as uh, being you know, sold off for parts, for example. So in order to operate or uh, portray yourself as an operating entity, you need to have everything in place, including an effluent treatment plant. Now last week when Northern Pulp filed the lawsuit, they also announced that they were under, uh, they were, you know, they were designing a new effluent treatment facility, which of course is going to be important whether they decide to operate this place themselves or if they're just preparing this plant for a potential sale to a, a new buyer that may also operate. Either way, the maximum value for that entity is going to be an entity that has a plan to operate. Even better, it would be if the plan involved uh, government funding to help pay for a new effluent treatment facility because of course then that means the return on equity for the company would be that much higher having paid less for uh, the asset. Now having reviewed the, uh, the claim I would say that it is not a particularly strong uh, claim against the province certainly not worth 450 million dollars if it were worth 450 million dollars for example you would expect that the company would be building an effluent treatment facility now or would have already started doing so uh, if it was worth the, if the profits were really that uh, that high what the lawsuit does show is a real tension when the government which is a regulator is also a party to a private contract now think of this from northern pulp's perspective again they would say that they signed a contract and then the other party unilaterally change the terms. Here you have a contract signed with the province of Nova Scotia that basically was an insurance contract on the effluent treatment facility until 2030. Now the province comes in and says no you need to change that effluent treatment facility into something uh, better, uh, more efficient, more modern. And so Northern Pulp can legitimately say well that wasn't the understanding when we signed this contract and we both signed it so we have to live up to it. So on the government side, you have to say, well, was the Boat Harbor Act a legitimate use of government power? And at first blush, yes, it is. The government has the right and the obligation to regulate uh, activities that might harm the environment, 
Certainly the Boat Harbor facility was a major polluter and in fact Pictolanding First Nation had a very strong claim in nuisance against both the province and the mill uh, regarding that effluent because it was causing such health concerns for their community in the surrounding area. Air quality, water quality, uh, all, of those, all of those effects were being felt. So the province did uh, enact the Boat Harbor Act. They gave Northern Pulp five years to come up with a new and better plan for their effluent treatment. Northern Pulp didn't challenge the legislation. They didn't build a new plant. Those were really their only two options. And it is not uh, within, it's, it's not uh, justifiable for Northern Pulp to just sit back, do nothing, let the clock run out and hope that the Nova Scotia government extended uh, the deadline. Uh, also, and this was part of the lawsuit that was filed, Northern Pulp suggesting that certain bureaucrats gave them assurances that in fact the deadline would be extended. The internal management rule in law would say that you, if you're dealing with another entity, an organization, a corporation, uh, you should know, if you know who makes the decisions, you can't rely on some lower level uh, decision maker who's not the ultimate decision maker. So in this case it was a political decision, Northern Pulp would have known that so they could not uh, rely on a bureaucrat to say otherwise. The conspiracy claim also I think fails to recognize that this was not obviously a winning political decision at the time it was made to shut the mill down. Uh, it was not clearly a popular and in fact at the time it was seen as a risky decision by the government. So I don't think Northern Pulp uh, has a strong claim on that basis either. Northern Pulp instead they should have uh, either, well they should have proposed and built a new treatment facility if they were going to continue to operate the mill and they should have negotiated during that five-year uh, time frame for the province to pay part of the cost of the construction of that facility on the basis that uh, they had changed the terms of the contract uh, unilaterally. So that is essentially what Northern Pulp was doing now by filing this lawsuit is that they're trying to put pressure on the government to come to the table and uh, put some money into the construction of this new facility. Hopefully the Nova Scotia government uh, finally makes a smart deal with respect to this mill. They've made many others uh, long-term deals, uh, deals that don't seem to, in retrospect to have been very wise. Uh, hopefully as well the province will, if they're going to invest money in a treatment facility, takes an equity position in the uh, company so that the profits from this mill are not all going to foreign owners and shareholders but rather can stay here and benefit for, to the benefit of all Nova Scotians. So. Uh, we'll see how that develops. I would expect within the next six months to a year that we'll be hearing an announcement that Northern Pulp has designed a new effluent treatment facility, that the province is going to contribute some funding to it, but certainly not $450 million and hopefully nowhere close to that figure. Uh, so we'll see how that develops. I'll be keeping an eye on uh, things as they come along and uh, if uh, you have any thoughts or comments I'd be happy to hear from you and uh, thank you again for for watching. Thank you for listening and we'll uh, see you again soon.